Thank you. Uh, I would like also to thank the organizer for uh, inviting me as well as the author for thinking about me in, for the discussion of this paper that is quite closely related to, to my research. So this is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna first uh, provide an overview of the study. I mean, this paper looks at, as Mark was uh, presenting, the direct impact of ICTs on firm export performance, looking at both the extensive margin, but also the intensive margin, as well as the direct impact of ICTs on export through productivity. So what is really nice about the paper is that they are able to combine uh, different data sets from three different countries, neighboring countries, Belgium, France, and the Netherlands, over the period 2014 to 2021. This is also nice because these studies that I have been doing, they finished in 2014, so perhaps some of the difference in results that we get might be related also to the period of analysis. So what they do is uh, the use of ICT is uh, measured using a digital intensity index, which uh, basically they convert it into categories of the extent of digitalization across firms. And also they look at the effects of individual technologies uh, on, on the export performance. As Mark was uh, presenting, what they find is heterogeneous effects, both across countries as well as uh, across technologies. So in terms of country effects, uh, the results for Belgium and the Netherlands suggest that exports are enhanced through this ICT-driven productivity improvement. So there is an indirect effect, but they were not able to find a direct uh, impact of ICT technologies on, on export performance. On the other hand, for the case of France, what they find is that ICT, uh, ICT's impact exports uh, may be through, uh, through, through both, through the direct and the indirect effect. Okay. So what I like about this paper is that they are trying to disentangle these two effects. On the one hand, this direct effect by which ICT technologies, they decrease this transaction cost and enable basically to reach a larger potential market of customers. And on the other hand, uh, there is this indirect effect that runs through productivity. So this uh, adoption of ICT technologies allow firms to become more efficient, and through these efficiency gains, uh, they are able to get into foreign markets. Okay? So what I like also about the paper, as I suggested, is that they are able to uh, do the analysis for different uh, countries. I focus on a different index at the macro level than the one that in the paper are using, which is the well-known Digital Economy and Society Index that basically suggests that these three countries uh, differ in terms of the extent of digitalization at the country level. We have the Netherlands on the one hand that is at the top of the ranking, and, and I think in, in both indices that we are using, that's the case. There is no discussion about that the Netherlands leads the table in terms of digitalization. However, there is more division in terms of France and, and Belgium. In, according to the Digital Economy and Society Index, Belgium <coughs> will lag uh, much behind France in, in digital technology and I will come to this a, a bit later, okay? Also, something that I like, and apologies for doing this self-advertisement, is that uh, they use a, an index of digitalization, something that I did also in, in a recent paper published in the Small Business Economy, where we also introduced this index of digitalization at the firm level, and we explored this two effects, the direct and direct, indirect effect on, on trade participation. We focus specifically on SMEs because we thought uh, these are the type of companies that have more to gain from the adoption of digital technologies. And I would also recommend or 
by probably to disentangle uh, the effect considering these two type of firms between large and small medium sized enterprises. There is nothing bad or ugly about the paper of Mark and, and co authors, so the following uh, are going to be comments and, and suggestions that perhaps they might help you to, to improve. One is in terms of contribution, I think. Uh, the paper is a still work in progress. Probably you need to work a little bit more on this, on explicitly stating what makes the study uh, unique and how it contributes both to theory and practice. I think you have room to do that. It's just a question of uh, writing it down. The second is more conceptual thing, uh, the definition of ICTs. So, what exactly are information and communication technologies? Are all digital technologies considered ICTs? In my opinion, not. <laughs> so I do not think, for instance, that robot is an information and communication technology. I could think that it is a digital technology, an automation technology, but it cannot be considered. I think this is important, particularly for uh, the consequences on trade, while ICTs have been related to the fragmentation of production function and therefore uh, towards the global value chains, uh, automation is being linked to the opposite phenomenon, to what we are going to talk, I guess, tomorrow about reshoring and, and, and the opposite phenomenon of fragmentation. So I think it would be interesting to, to disentangle both. Um, related to that is the impact of robots and artificial intelligence on trade comparable to that of traditional ICTs. Uh, in the paper, as you show us, uh, you investigate the effects of e-commerce and CRM, but it would be also nice now that everybody's talking about AI what is the impact of artificial intelligence and also robots on, on trade performance. And when you do the analysis, basically, you look at the impact of these technologies in isolation, but I think the spirit of the, of the index is that these technologies do not work in isolation. I mean, they are interrelated among each other. Therefore, the effect of one is going to be enhanced by the use of the other technologies. So it will be important, I guess, my opinion, to control for these other technologies as well when assessing the impact of a specific one. In terms of the index, uh, I mean, I wonder why you disentangle across categories, uh, low, medium, and high, instead of using the index as a continuous variable, because if I look at the results, the effect is linear. I would consider this entangled across categories if that was not going to be the result, but given that it is a linear relationship, I'm not sure why you don't explore uh, the continuous variable. Uh, also, that as well concern me a little bit is about the timing. I mean, you are talking about lags and, and so forth. So, particularly the one that I'm more uh, concerned is about how you a model the Markov process in the paper basically the Markov process is modeled as productivity depends on lack productivity perfect lack export perfect because this is capturing a learning by exporting but I'm more concerned about why uh, digitalization or ICT uh, current ICT affects current productivity so I would suggest that this should be also also, like one peri period, I mean, according to previous papers, uh, using other, other strategies, okay? And it is not clear to me also how uh, the index enters into the Marco process. Does it enter in categories or does it enter as a continuous variable? Mm. The other uh, issues is in terms of the interpretation of results. I mean, why all in France the direct effects seems relevant. Uh, as I told you before, I mean, in, in the studies that we did, I mean, we find uh, 
but I'm not sure whether this is going to be the case for France. That this effect, the direct effect, comes particularly in the case of small and medium enterprises. I don't know if the productive structure in France differs very much from that of Belgium and the Netherlands. You talk about the importance of the size of the domestic market. I think that's fine. But if I look at the DSI index, the digitalization of economy and society index, uh, I wonder whether the direct effect might also depend on the extent of country digital development. In that case, it was basically the Netherlands at the top, France in the middle, and then we have Belgium. So in case there might be some sort of inverted U-shaped relationship that also is driving these results. Okay. Also, I guess, I mean, you need uh, to explain a little bit more why uh, for France that the two effects appear, the direct and the indirect, uh, which of the two effects is larger, whether it is the productivity effect or it is the, the direct one. And also, finally, why all e-commerce also has a negative impact on productivity, which is quite strange mm -hmm. in the case of the, of the Netherlands. I have other suggestions, address selection bias in the intensive margin. I don't think you do that. Also consider exploring the interaction between skills and ICT in the export equation. That might be also nice to do given the importance that you give to human capital, particularly in the introduction. And since you are estimating a total factor productivity revenue, because you don't have a firm level prices, I think it would be important to include both the markup and the TFP in the same equation, in the same export equation. And finally, something that we have discussed also is given the availability of destination data for France, it could be interesting also to analyze whether more digitalized firms tend to export to more distant countries. Okay? So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to read the paper. I think it's a promising paper. And thank you for citing also my work in a very generous way. So thank you.